Well, welcome back. This is the second part of this video. I hope you got the chance to watch the, the first part. And we're carrying on our examination of this paper here uh, by Dr. Uh, Peter Rhodes, anaesthetist and intensivist, and Dr. Peter Parry, who is a uh, psychiatrist. And this paper is fully available here on PDF. Uh, you can download the whole thing. It's really quite intelligible and really quite hard hitting. So great that it's readily available there uh, without having to pay. And of course, in the previous video, we looked at things like this data here, which shows various drugs that have been recalled in the past. So here we see uh, Resilin, which was recorded in the year 2000 after 649 uh, reported uh, deaths, whereas the COVID deaths on the VERS uh, scheme after COVID vaccines, 337,544, but it still hasn't been withdrawn. So withdrawn, 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 not withdrawn. Um, <laughs> it really is quite, uh, quite bizarre when you look at it in those terms. Now, I want to go in and give some more detail about what this paper says, because lots of interesting things. Uh, but do do download it for yourself. It's immensely readable, quite intelligible, not in not in a complicated medical terminology at all. Quite accessible to the average intelligent uh, non-specialist viewer or reader in that case. So we've looked at the need for improved transparency and pharmacovigilance. Now, the introduction to this paper proper after the abstract, strong science characterised by open-mindedness, objectivity, curiosity and freedom of debate. God, don't we need these things? Freedom of debate. Good grief, that would be nice, wouldn't it? If we had real freedom of debate, because right now we haven't. It's as simple as that. That's why I've got this portrait of Eric Blair in the background here. Um, George Orwell, of course. You know, we need to be free to talk about these things without the thought police breathing down our necks, which is unfortunately what we've got in many areas of life at the moment in the UK. I'm hopeful things are about to improve in the United States. but In the United Kingdom, uh, they're not. Global pharmaceutical industry revenue. Uh, Twenty, uh, sorry, two thousand and one, it was uh, three hundred ninety billion US dollars. Twenty twenty two, that had gone up to one point four eight two trillion. <laughs> one thousand four hundred eighty two thousand billion dollars. I mean, how do you even start to work out what that number means? You know. But it shows the amount of money that's at stake here. And this is why there may be, oh, who knows, temptations associated with that kind of money. Huge amounts of money. Incredible. From 1953 onwards, looking at withdrawal of products. So this is the key thing here. These products have been withdrawn for relatively small amounts of deaths. Tragic, but relatively small amounts. COVID vaccines with a very larger amount of deaths have not been withdrawn. Why not? We have a long history of product withdrawal, which is what this paper, of course, is discussing. Anyway, 462 medical products have had to be recalled from 1953. Median data, that's the number in the middle. Uh, first reported adverse reaction to year withdrawal is six years. Interquartile range. <clears throat> one to 15 years so quite a long variety but six years is the average here so i guess by this logic uh the medium data have got to wait another three years of adverse reactions from covid vaccines before they're withdrawn let's hope it's not the case now some fascinating examples in this paper uh, let's look first of all at uh, thalidomide uh, marketed first of all in 1957 in germany 1958, thalidomide was licensed and promoted in the UK as a wonder drug to treat headaches, insomnia and nausea in pregnant women. Absolutely terrifying <clears throat> because we know the teratogenic birth defects that were caused by this drug. Advertisements emphasise safety. Catchphrases such as non-toxic, no known toxicity. 
This is what people were told at the time. It turned out to be inaccurate. Slightly more than inaccurate, it turned out to be disastrous. Inaccurate. 1961, first publication on birth defects. 1961, uh, thalidomide was actually withdrawn. So it's what, four years after it originally came out in Germany. Uh, three years after it originally came out in the United Kingdom. And then if you look at the paper, there's all sorts of things that have been going on with thalidomide. But then finally, in 2023, that's right, 2023, Australian Prime Minister announced a formal national apology to all Australians impacted by the thalidomide tragedy. And of course, in the UK, we think about the infected blood scandal. The government has just come clean on this now. Blood infected with AIDS, AIDS and hepatitis B. It's just come clean on this in 2023, 2024, 2024 really. And uh, I remember this going on in the 80s. It's decades, decades for these patients to be recognised for the harm that was done. And yet we see the COVID vaccines yet to be withdrawn. Very strange indeed. Now, FDA scientist Francis uh, Kelsey. So the thalidomide in Germany, the thalidomide in the UK, but Francis Kelsey from the Food and Drug Administration demanded further safety trials prior to market authorization. Thalidomide was never approved for release in the United States. The United States never released thalidomide. They had no thalidomide type birth deformities, whereas in the United Kingdom and Europe we did. The FDA did its job. Francis Kersley, Francis Kelsey stood tall, put her foot down. What would she be thinking about the current situation? We can only speculate. Maybe she wouldn't be very pleased. Now, another drug. Uh, <laughs> I never, can never say this one. Um, uh, Vivox. Rofecoxib. Rofecoxib. It was a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. The thing is with non-steroidal drugs is they, um, they have adverse effects, like, 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 like uh, aspirin, ibuprofen. Well, aspirin is one, really. Ibuprofen, um, um, diclofenac, naproxen. You might have different names in different parts of the world. But they can have adverse effects on the stomach, and this one was marketed as having less. Anyway, it was causing other massive side effects, as we saw here. Uh, on this one, this is the drug here we're talking about here. Uh, officially, uh, 600, uh, 6, 6,639 cases according to data from the FDA Adverse Events Reporting Scheme. Anyway, evidence was concealed, adverse, adverse cardiovascular events in the VVOX arm of the study. So... Cardiovascular events were concealed. Cardiovascular events concealed. I hope that couldn't happen today. Cardiovascular events. I'm sure that rings a bell from somewhere, but never mind. Let's go on. American physicians, uh, they were given support and fin finances for research if they supported the drug. If they didn't support the drug, they were defamed. Support was withdrawn, they were discredited, neutralised, those who failed to promote use of the, uh, in this case, the VVOX, the uh, anti, uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drug. You might see some parallels with the current situation. That data there was from the Melbourne uh, court in Australia. Over 20 million people in the US are believed to have taken VVOX, of whom an estimated 88,000 to 139,000 suffered 
myocardial infarctions with a 30 to 40% fatality rate. So the real death rate was actually a lot higher than that officially reported by the uh, FDA adverse events reporting system. Maybe more on that uh, shortly. Now, that uh, information there was from... Uh, Information there about the numbers was from a testimony of Dr. Graham to the U.S. Senate. That's the link there. Merck had created a settlement fund of $4.85 billion, but I don't think they ever admitted any culpability, but that was the fund to pay people out, $4.85 billion. Now, COVID-19 gene-based vaccines. The key failure, according to this paper, is to have mandated injections in young and healthy adults. These mandates correlated with excess mortality. And we have actually seen this on uh, this data here from Australia, where we see that young people had higher mortality in the period. So this, this age group here, 35, 25 to 34, 35 to 44. Uh, the times when just after the vaccines had been given, we did see the temporal correlation of increased, uh, increased mortality. Tragically, that means... People no longer with us. This is uh, couldn't be more important. So there, there was a correlation there. There seems to be an awful lot of correlations these days. BMJ Public Health, excess mortality, January 2020 to December 2022, 47 Western nations, over 3 million excess deaths. The highest number of excess deaths was reported in 2021. And this paper points out the year in which mass vaccination began temporal correlation of course doesn't prove causality but just another correlation we've got so much correlation these days we've got correlation coming out of the woodwork use of the term vaccine for a novel experimental agent that deploys gene codes may convey a false sense of assurance according to the paper and this is partly what took me in and I was taken in. I was I was conned by this. Um, we couldn't conceptualise the idea that vaccines could be causing harm, especially after the initial first few weeks. Um, little did we know. Key failures. Coercion and mandates. Ridicule of edu educated hesitancy. So as we said, the educated, educated hesitancy... It's people that advocate against the vaccines or talk against the vaccines, but in an educated way based on data and based on empirical science, like the systemic distribution of the lipid nanoparticles and the antigens being produced potentially in any part of the body, such as, oh, I don't know, the heart, the brain, the liver. That's educated hesitancy. It's not just saying I don't like it. Western Australia, where this data here is from, um, was essentially free of the SARS coronavirus 2 in 2021. So these, these deaths in 2021 were not due to the uh, COVID because basically Western Australia was locked down and there basically wasn't any in that period of time. Now, what about medical research in general? Uh, the authors make some really quite profound comments on this. The crisis rests on pressure to publish. So we need to get rid of this pressure to publish, this publish or perish. A lot of the funding comes from publishing. We need to work out other ways to fund, not just public uh, publishing. Uh, failure to publish negative and or unfavourable data. So failure, if, if data is negative, it's often not published. And if it's unfavourable, it's often not published. Publication bias. So too much publication altogether, not enough publication if the results are negative. Lack of uh, data transparency and burial of data. If you don't like it, don't worry about it. Put it in a drawer, put it in a shredder. Just forget about it. Whatever you do, don't publish it because it's unfavourable. Poor methodological design and studies. Often not that well designed. Statistical errors and uh, carelessness certainly happens. 
inexperience of peer reviewers and editors. Inexperience, yep. I wonder if some peer reviewers are specially selected for the job. Surely not. No, no, that couldn't happen. Um, just, just a passing thought from my cynical mind that papers could be sent to peer reviewers that you know are going to give a favourable review. Nah, nah. Anyway, commercial interests... This is from the paper again, ideological bias, ideological biases, ideology has no place in science. Uh, Fairly to declare conflicts of interest and fraud. Or put problems in current scientific re- medical research. Distorted data, particularly due to commercial bias, is regularly published in medical journals. Wow. Distorted data due to commercial bias is regularly published in medical journals. These medical journals we used to trust with our lives, literally, (laughs) literally, that uh, if it was in a medical journal, you could bet your life on it and you would take the treatment or not take the treatment. Now we might have second thoughts. Marketing-based medicine is at odds with evidence-based medicine. and We have an illusion of evidence-based medicine as we've looked at before. Maybe more on that in a subsequent video shortly. Lack of recognition of pharmacovigilance data. So a polio vaccine was withdrawn after just 10 deaths reports. Swine flu vaccine of 1976 was recalled just after 25 reports. uh, Recalled after just 25 reports of uh, the ultimate 53 deaths. So eventually there was 53 deaths, but it was recalled after 25 Whereas we look at uh, the current situation, that is the adverse events that have been reported. Uh, and this is the number of deaths reported on VARES. Not, uh, not a few, not, not 10 after a polio vaccine, not 25 after a swine flu vaccine. But um, 37,544 after... COVID vaccines, but no withdrawal. Couldn't make it up. Pharmacovigilance underestimation factor. I'm not going to look at that in detail, but we've looked at the fact that even this pharmacovigilance data doesn't say anything like the full scope of the problem. Uh, The yellow card system in my country, for example, reports about maybe uh, 10% of serious adverse reactions and maybe 2 or 3 or 4% of um, less serious adverse events. And it's the same. Most adverse events are not reported. Very often people just don't relate the drug or the vaccine to the adverse events that they've been suffering. So just a few extra points there from the paper. And of course, unfortunately, these days we always need to check. Uh, Did the authors have any conflicts of interest? The authors declared no potential conflicts of interest. Um, Funding, the authors received no financial support. No financial support for the research authorship and or publication of this article. In fact, I'd imagine they'd have to pay quite a bit to put it into ongoing public uh, domain um, um, websites. So... A few extra points from the paper there. Do get it for yourself. It's there. It's available. Really quite readable. Uh, Very readable. I can show it to you. I can't blow it up. But there there it is there. Um, So check it out for yourself. Very interesting read. And very well researched and written article. So that's just a bit more detail from the from the previous video. We'll leave that one there. Do read it for yourself, but for now, thank you for watching.